Hello and welcome to JS2. Today we are going to see about groundwater potential zone mapping using JS and remote sensing techniques that is integrated with multi-criteria analysis and analytical hierarchy process or HP approach. So these groundwater potential zones are uh, prepared by using various multi infidelity factors or determined by many factors or affected by many factors for the availability of groundwater. So uh, like geomorphology, land use, land cover, rhetology, soil type, drainage density, slope, lineament, rainfall, and uh, rainfall elevation, and other factors that uh, affect the availability of groundwater. So uh, these factors may vary depending on the, your study area and the geographical locations. But the most important ones ha that I have uh, used in this uh, video tutorial is for my case six types the first one is the range density which controls the runoff distribution and the infiltration rates of the water in a certain area and the second one is rainfall obviously the, it is the main source of water for the uh, study area and the third one is the slope which uh, is the driver of the water flow of energy or the energy the, this gives the energy of the water that flows and the fourth one, the land is land uh, cover of a certain area or the uh, uh, area which affects the recharge processes would be uh, due to different land use land cover types. And the fifth one, which determines the infiltration cap, the infiltration rate of the water, uh, because of the difference in the soil permeability, in the soil texture, and uh, as other soil chemical and uh, physical properties and the sixth one is the geological setup of the study area which on affects the infiltration movement and the stretch of water across a certain landscapes so this groundwater potential of map using gis and remote sensing will be will be modeled and mapped uh, by considering these parameters so Parameter selection is to control groundwater potential zone map is after uh, after considering this uh, parameters there are uh, certain uh, certain metrics that we are going uh, that I will show you in this uh, in this matrix uh, in the pairwise comparison matrix after uh, using these Excel sheets so automatically I will show this. Uh, this HP hierarchy process matrix, then uh, the factors that uh, generated from this uh, this Excel sheet will be converted to converted to this uh, uh, overlaying the process and finally produce uh, uh, the status of uh, the groundwater potential zone in uh, my study area. So now let us go to the actual. Uh, works so uh, this is uh, as I show you this is the main uh, uh, six parameters or systematic areas that I will go to show you in this uh, video today so what are the data requirements for preparing these layers so the first one is the density this density is derived from uh, DM or digital uh, elevation model so the first step is the study area, adding your study area and adding the digital elevation module of your study area. As you can see, see this is the, as the name indicates, this is a digital elevation module. The lowest is one uh, one seven seven is and the highest elevation is thirty four eighty seven meters above sea level. So the first one is uh, the first parameter is the drainage density. So let me go directly go to Arc Toolbox. So just go to Spatial Analysis Tools, then just go to Hydrology. Just go to Hydrology, then uh, I will uh, fill this DM if there is inconsistencies or there is uh, missing values in this raster data. I'll compute this fill, then double click on fill. Then the input raster must be the input surface raster must be the digital elevation module of your study area. And the output surface raster means the output surface raster means the place or the 
folders that you will going to put your output result so i will go to in my case i will go to just accept uh, the default uh, pause and just click okay Okay, great. Field name is consensusfully computed. Now let me go to the second step, which is flow direction. Double click on flow direction. Then the input raster must be the field name. The output raster means, as I told you earlier, the place or the folder that you want to put your output result. But as I did earlier, I will accept the default pass and click OK. Great, flow direction is successfully computed. Now let me go to the, the third step, which is flow accumulation. Double click on flow accumulation, and the input uh, uh, raster must be the flow direction. Click on flow direction. Then uh, the output accumulation raster means the place where you want to uh, you want to uh, put your your output result. But I will accept the default uh, folder path and click OK. Okay, success. So flow accumulation is successfully computed. So now let me make some amendments on this uh, flow accumulation raster because uh, and I will set some thresholds to make visualize uh, uh, streams or the smallest streams or the tributaries across this uh, study area. Uh, now let me go to just uh, um, map algebra and uh, raster calculator. Then the flow accumulation greater than let me make uh, 2000. Yes, then the output raster must means the place where you want to uh, put your uh, output uh, result. As I did it, I will accept the default folder, pass and click OK. Okay, great. So this is a uh, stream that are visible in the study area. Now let me go to the again to hydrology and uh, uh, and uh, let us make to uh, let us uh, make stream ordering. So click on double click on stream order. So the input raster is uh, this one. The full accumulation that uh, may, that is made within a threshold. And the second one is input flow direction, then select the input flow direction. The output raster means the place where you want to put your output result, but let me accept the default folder pass and click OK. Great. OK, great. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One means order one means the smallest tributaries, as you can see here, the smallest tributaries, the smallest tributaries and the streams. The second one, the green one is the medium. The third one is uh, the more uh, the moderate and the final, the fourth, which is the white one, is the biggest river. So this is the stream ordering that you are uh, going to get after making a stream ordering uh, if you see my uh, youtube channel i have made a, a video on uh, stream ordering so i will give the link and you can find uh, more on uh, how to make stream ordering so now let me uh, uh, still this is a raster uh, data now let me uh, change to uh, stream to future 
stream to feature or that means stream to uh, raster to victor so just go to arc toolbox and uh, stream to feature then the the input raster means this one the stream the ordering of stream and the uh, second one is uh, flow direction then select flow direction then click ok Great, great. So this is the stream to feature, stream to feature. So let me make some amendments on stream to features. So they will click on stream to feature, then go to symbology, go to symbology, category. Let me change this as grid code. Add all the values, yes, yes. As I told you earlier, this one is the largest tributary or the largest river, the largest river. So this is the pre-process step that, you are, that we are going to produce drainage density. Still, we are not producing stream density now. Let us go to special analyst tools again, special analyst tools, then click on density. So this is lines, as you can see streams are lines, so uh, click on line density. So the input polyline feature means uh, this one stream uh, features, so click on stream features and keep other things as constant or as it is and click OK. Great, great, great. So, uh, so this is a raster data set, a raster data set that is uh, pro that is made with this uh, line density by using these streams, but uh, by using uh, these rectangles, it uh, produces uh, uh, out of the boundary. So, uh, I don't want this. Uh, this data that is out of the boundary of my study area so this is raster by using my uh, study area boundary i will uh, extract so go to extraction extract by mask so the, uh, the input raster means this uh, line density the input raster or feature mask data is uh, my study area then click ok Great, so let me uncheck all other things. So this is this is uh, drainage density. So now uh, let me reclassify this drainage density into five. Reclassify. Reclassify. This one into five. Five. Just select five. Yes. Okay. Great. So now let me remove all other things. Since I have completed my drainage density and I don't want all other things. No remove. So drainage each density. 
so one thematic layer is prepared now the second step is to prepare rainfall so let me add uh, you can calculate rainfall from continuous raster uh, like trees, trips or other data sources or using your uh, gauge stations in this case i will show you how to calculate uh, rainfall by using uh, point data from ring gauge stations and, and interpolating it, it so let me add data so let me uh, find data great stations yes let me uncheck this one this is the stations this is uh, ringage stations with their value with their uh, mean annual rainfall value yes nine ringage stations with their mean annual rainfall uh, value so i will um, i will interpolate this uh, the rainfall using uh, idw interpolation methods so go to interpolation i did click on idw then click on the input point feature means the stations since the stations are point lanes uh, the z value means the by what parameter you are going to interpolate your data means mean annual rainfall then click ok okay great so uh, it interpolates all uh, areas using these uh, nine uh, range stations which is out of the study area so this is a raster now let me uh, clip my study area because i don't want uh, other uh, data so go to extraction extract by mask yes study area click ok ok great now let me remove this one ok now let me remove this station points because i already interpolated and get this value now let me reclass this one also reclass reclassify click on this one classify into five yes okay okay So this is rainfall, rainfall, and I don't want other data. Okay, this is rainfall. This is rain intensity. So two thematic layers has been already computed successfully. Now let me go to the third variable, which is a slope. So as you know, a slope is generated from DM. Let me. Yes, this is DM, so uh, I will generate a slope from this DM data. So just go to Spatial Analyst Tools in order to generate a slope. Then go to Surface. There are so many, uh, there are many uh, characteristics of uh, attributal uh, surface. Now let me select slope. Just select DM and the output measurement. Uh, in terms of degree or uh, percent rise, let me select percent rise and leave as it is, other things as it is, and click OK. Okay, great. Now let me reclassify this slope into five parameters reclass, reclassify. Yes, 
the input raster must, must be the slope and the class field must be the values then click on reclassify select 5 into 5 classes and click ok then ok Okay, great. Now let me remove this one and let me rename this as slope. Slope. So the third parameter is now let me make some amendments on the slope symbology. Yes, let me select this one. Yes, okay, great. This is the slope. And the third one is land is land cover. I have already prepared land is land cover for, uh, for my study area in the previous video. If you want to uh, check again, uh, if you want to see how to classify land is land cover, check again my uh, YouTube channel. I will post a link to how to make land is land cover classification using ArcGIS with an example of Landsat 8. So I uh, have um, let me add that the classified land land is land cover map. This one, yes. This one. This is land is land cover map. Let me make some amendments on symbology. This is a vegetation, so vegetation green. Water body. Let me make this as international cartographic symbols of blue and agriculture this one yes and uh, no let me make this one great uh bearland let me make bearland as this one okay great and settlement settlement will be this one yes great yes great so this is land is land cover map. So now let me just go to the fives, which is soil, fives parameter. Now I will uh, compute from my data, this is soil, soil. This is the national data uh, of soil. The national data of soil of my country so i will clip uh, by my study area i will clip by my study area if you see my study area yes this is my study area and this is the soil of my country so let me clip this one just simple step just go to uh, geoprocessing tools click on clip and then the input raster must be the soil and the mask the, the clip feature must be the study area based on study area then click click ok great i have already clipped it and let me remove the big data which is soil so this is soil let me make this as soil Yes. So this is the soil of my study area. Let me make some amendments on symbology. Yes, symbology. Categories. Uh, let me make as this as soil type. Add all values. Apply. Okay. Yeah, great. This is my soil type. Okay, so uh, land is land cover, a slope, rainfall, drainage density. What is remaining is a geology of the study area. So now I have shape file of uh, geology, national geology. So in go to our data, then select geology. So this is geology data of my country, as you can see. 
now let me go to this is uh, the vector data and I will uh, clip my study area by using my, I will clip my data by using my study area or based on my study area then click on clip the input feature must be geology the clip feature is study area and click OK into layer Great. unfortunately my uh, study area is uh, one type of geological uh, aspect if you open this geology yes this is a geology so my study area is only one type of geological uh, setup so th these are the parameters uh, prepared uh, using ArcMap ArcGIS so in the next video I will show you how to how to uh, uh, produce the influence factors using AHP hierarchy process Excel sheet and the determining factors and then uh, how to uh, how to go uh, overlay them uh, how to overlay the results using the uh, results of influencing factors for each so how much how much influence uh, how, which one is more influential factor for the groundwater uh, availability so in, in that case you are going to check uh, using availability teachers and uh, expert judgment uh, and other focus if if importantly focusing group discussion is uh, and local knowledge so by using uh, this focus group discussion is local knowledge available literatures expert judgments and using the so excel sheet uh, generated of the software you will uh, you can uh, generate uh, you can generate the, the results and uh, by combining in the overlay process of ArcGIS we will uh, produce the final uh, la, uh, the, the final groundwater or potential zone mapping uh, with the help of uh, this uh, ArcGIS. And this is what we have today so thank you for watching.